Good morning, Upper Dublin, and welcome to a special Olympics-themed episode of UDTV. I'm your host, Chris Smith. And I'm Maggie Mustin. The Olympics is a chance for athletes from around the world to come together to compete for gold and glory. But it's also an opportunity for everyone to set aside differences and come together to celebrate human achievement. Our first segment will focus on athletes from the U.S. that look good for winning medals this year. You may have seen them on television commercials or heard about them in the news. Zach and Max have the hometown competitors that stand the best chance of bringing home the hardware. Thanks, guys. As you know, the U.S. generally does very well in the Olympics, and this year should be no different. We have several athletes that have their eyes on the winner's podium. Making her return after missing the 2014 Olympics with a knee injury, skier Lindsey Vaughn is ready for the 2018 Games. She is a gold and bronze in 2010 for downhill and super G, and is also a seven-time world champion medalist. Hopefully, she will bring back her Olympic form in Pyeongchang. Expected to be her successor uh, is American female skier Michaela Schifrin, who is the reigning gold medalist for the women's slalom in the 2018 Alpine Ski World Championship. She has appeared in advertisements for Visa, Bose, Xfinity, and the Super Bowl. Next, Sean White, considered by many as the best snowboarder in the world, is a two-time gold medalist in the halfpipe, 13-time X Game gold medalist in the Superpipe, and 10-time SB award winner. After finishing a disappointing fourth in 2010, Sean White is hoping to reclaim gold in South Korea. With Team Russia and NHL athletes not competing in the men's ho ice hockey tournament, the U.S. men's hockey team may have the best chance to take gold since the 1980 Miracle on Ice team. In 2014, the U.S. did not medal, finishing fourth after losses to Canada and Finland, despite having a roster stocked with NHL talent. There's a lot of talent from the U.S. headed to Pyeongchang for the Winter Olympics, so make sure you tune in to see the U.S. win gold. Thank you, gentlemen, and remember, that's just a small number from a long list of hopefuls. I think one of the neat things about the Olympics is that you have seen so many sports most of us have never tried. There are a lot I've never even heard of, but we actually have a student here at UD that's competitive in an Olympic sport. We'll turn it over to our team at UD Talk Sports for more information. Thank you, Maggie. Welcome to UD Talk Sports. I'm your host, Quinn Burns, for this special segment on the Olympics. Now, everyone knows about skiing, snowboarding, and even figure skating, but there are a lot of lesser known sports out there. Take biathlon, for instance. It is like cross country skiing with various targets that the athletes actually shoot at with a rifle. Yes, you heard me, a loaded rifle. Then, there is the skeleton race where you are on your stomach inches away from the snow, going 80 miles per hour. It's very fast speed, very dangerous, and very scary. Deaths have even been caused from this. Now I'm sure that you've heard of alpine skiing though. We're going over to Jada Wilson, who is sitting down with Bryn Kantowicz, who is a competitive alpine skier. So I'm here with Bryn Kantowicz, better known as B Skier around the school. And Bryn's a junior here, so I know you ski a lot in your free time. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, what kind of skiing you do? Yeah, so I'm an alpine ski racer, so um, I compete in slalom and giant slalom, which is out of a few categories. Okay, and alpine ski racing is the one in the Olympics, like the one really popular one? Yes, it's very popular. Okay, so is that like about speed or is it about like technique? Um, it's about both. We train a lot on technique in order to gain speed. Okay, gotcha. And what team do you race for? I race on the Jack Frost race team, which is a part of the Jack Frost Ski Mountain in the Poconos. Okay, and how, like, what are your practices like for that, um, you know, technique and speed? So, um, in the winter, we train every weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and also during the week, I have night trainings Thursday and Friday nights. Geez, that sounds like very vigorous. How do you, with the night training, manage school and it skiing? It is very difficult to manage my schoolwork, but I do my homework in the car and when I get home. Okay, yeah, can't imagine. But, so you spend a lot of time doing this and like you've dedicated a lot of your life to it. How, do you like plan, plan to pursue it after high school? I do hope to do it in college, whether it's a race team or a club team, I do hope to do it. Gotcha. Well, Bren, we wish you the best of luck in your post high school ski. Thank you. Ski journey. No problem, thank you. Thank you very much, Jada. And as always, go Cardinals. Thanks, guys. We wish Bryn the best of luck for the season. Every Olympic Games brings with it big news. The Joshes will fill us in on the need-to-know facts about this year's Games. Every four years, athletes from around the world come together to compete in the name of their country. 
Tomorrow morning at 6 marks the beginning of the 2018 Winter Olympics with the opening ceremony, which no one will watch because it's at 6, and we already wake up early enough to come here to school. This year, many changes have been made to make the Olympics different from any other year. First, this year will, the Olympics will take place on Pyeongchang local time, which is 14 hours ahead of our time. Therefore, some live Olympic events will be televised at odd hours for us in UD. Next, the Olympic Stadium, costing $109 million, will only be used four times in its lifetime, twice for the Olympics and twice for the Paralympics. Then the dilemma of what, this, what to do with the stadium will be simple. South Korean officials will tear it down. This year, as many of you heard, Russia is banned from the Olympic Games. This means that the country's flag will not be displayed, the anthem will not be played, and the record book will show that no medals were won. However, Russian athletes are still permitted to participate, but they will be wearing a neutral uniform. Over in South Korea, the weather for the Olympics is extremely cold. To stop the harsh conditions for the athletes, the U.S. team uniforms made by designer Ralph Lauren will feature heaters. These heaters will keep athletes warm and allow them to participate at their optimum level. Lastly, players from the NHL are not allowed to participate in this year's games. This is due to debates between the league and the International Olympic Committee. So unfortunately, we won't be able to see our favorite hockey rivals. So UD, tomorrow morning, tune into the opening ceremony and let's go Team USA. I wonder what losing the NHL will do to our hockey team's ability to compete. I don't know, Maggie, but if anyone knows about competition, it's Mr. Stove and Mr. Wall. Let's see who will win out in the battle of wits, that is, teacher versus teacher. The Olympic rings represent the seven continents of the world. No idea. Lindsey Vaughn is a downhill skier. That's a huge false. Yep. She is a downhill skier. They're going to be in Pyeongchang, South Korea. They are in South Korea. Yes, absolutely. See it every day in phys ed sometimes. It is. Not in the winter games, though. Oh, false. Has to be. One of the best sports ever. False. I go over. Under. Hmm. I would say ski jumping, long distance ski jumping. It was popular. Well, let's go with um, the men's downhill. Next year. Next time. Not anymore. Wall got that one right. Yeah. You threw him a soft, threw Wall a softball on that one, I'm sure. Good work there from our phys ed department. Let's take some time away from our Olympics coverage to talk about a great upper Dublin event. Ashley Kunkel has joined us in the studio to discuss Dancing with the Cards. Good morning, Ashley. Can you tell us a little bit about this event? Yeah, so it's called Dancing with the Cards. It's a play on Dancing with the Stars. And basically, couples from the student body pair up, pick a dance style, and perform a dance in front of a panel of judges. Oh, cool. And I assume this is a fundraiser? Yes. Each year, we pick a different charity to fundraise for. This year, it's RSDSA, which help people suffering with RSD. That sounds like a great cause. How much are the tickets, and when's the event? So the event's on Sunday, March 11th, and tickets are going to be $5. Well, thank you. Let's make an effort to get out and support this great cause. It's time to prepare for some levity of Olympic proportions as we delve into the soothing world of ASMR as only Roman and Matt can deliver. Hello and welcome to UDTV ASMR. ASMR stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. And in actuality, that just means that we talk and it gets a little cringy sometimes. Actually, tingly, 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 tingly yes. Guess the back of your neck. Right, yeah, like the spine. So the first sound we're going to hear today is the sound, this is an upper double version of ASMR, yes. is the sound of an assignment book yes. being signed. Yes. What class are you going to? Thank you, Miss Boyer. Thank you. Yes. This is the sound you may sound in the hallway, the sound of the little pump. Escada. Very nice, very nice. And now Matt is going to demonstrate the sound of a freshman 
Go for it. This is the sound of refreshment. Where's room 122? Oh, it was chilling. Absolutely chilling, Matt. Thank you, thank you. And now here's a sound that you're going to hear quite often, quite frequently in the upper of High School. It's the sound of a phone being tapped under a desk. Ready? Here we go. Someone's on Finsta. That was beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And, and here's this little special treat. You could want to do the honors. You can do the oh, honors. I would love to, Roman. But I'll announce it here. You do the honors. Now, uh, this is a very special treat for our upper top of an audience. This is the sound of a disc being broken in half. That's very interesting. It's not breaking, it's not breaking. but that's okay. Let me try it. Let me try it again. Ready? Absolutely soothing. This is absolutely soothing. And then, you, uh, finally, our final sound is is a very common sound. I would think you would hear in uh, Upper Dublin. It's the sound of green goo being spilled on the table. Of course, of course, green goo. Yes. You, this is just your your average green goo. Let's take a listen. say delicious that's all from us here on your tv asmr what lunch do we have i don't know is, it, is there a d lunch i don't know go birds thank you roman for that enlightening segment that concludes our coverage of the 2018 winter olympics we hope you enjoyed the show and we'll look forward to seeing you next time